and that sort of gave me a real insight into like poverty then and and uh, what was actually happening out in the streets. And then uh, obviously if probably a few years later from that it, it maybe led you to start the fan support and food <coughs> bag in- yeah. initiative. Uh, how did that all come about? Well, it was it was me and Dave. We were, we were both working with United at the time, and, and we said the story many times. But we were just, you know, we were meeting a community leader in a community centre, and we went in, and we were having a cup of tea, and there's a big queue outside, uh, outside the door. And me thought it was the bingo because it was all shapes, sizes, ages, uh, all queuing. And I said to the I said to the uh, the girl Rosie, we were meeting. I said, "What's that?" And what what what's on? And she went, "That's the food bank." So, you know, a bit, a bit shocking because it was like 10 minutes from our house and I didn't realise that there were people queuing up for food uh, in Anfield. And then she said, just come and have a look at the back. So we went into the back and we seen the the, pov- uh, the, the pantry and as I, I just said, we said, you know, with a big bag of pasta getting split up into little sweet bags to, to, uh, to go around and just like what they were putting in bags because that's all they had because it run on donations and it was just it was just awful and you just seen people from your area basically getting given uh, this to basically stay alive and you're just thinking what the fuck so from that as I said we talked about the 20 plenty stuff before we'd already had collaboration Liverpool and Everton fans and you know we come home that night and and, uh, and I said to Dave I said look you know, we're going to start a food bank I think I'd looked at what Celsa had done you know, and they do like a once a year big collections, don't they? And I said, well, why can't we do that every week? So we said, well, why don't we do it both clubs together? Uh, so that night, the next week, we were outside Goodison and, 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 and come from that, a couple of wheelie bins, more chip papers than donations. But it's grew, it's grew, it's grew to where we are now. And, uh, you know, it's it's sad it's grown, but I think it's uh, it's been a lifesaver. Do you, do you feel any closer to your aim of... Stopping food poverty in Liverpool. Uh, well, we would have done in uh, in December if we'd got a Labour government, because obviously we're going to eradicate food banks. Uh, I think what we've done is we've lifted an awareness. Yeah. You know, we've made people aware of food poverty. Uh, we've made people aware of universal credit, the issues that that's having to your community. So I think we've lifted the awareness of people. Uh, what we've also done is make people feel part of a collective you know not about it or i'm all right jack so you know i yeah, don't really care about what happens to my next door neighbor so hopefully we change that perception uh you know that we're all in this together in this current uh, time and you know i say liverpool comes together doesn't it magnificently well at times so i think we've done some real good stuff but while there's while we're still collecting a few banks are still in existence but then we failed them yeah yeah it, it's obviously a difficult one but you can't stop doing what you what you're doing because uh, people need it and stuff and you know uh, uh, there's a little bit back onto the football clubs and how, how <laughs> liverpool and everton helped you they've been superb uh they've been absolutely superb there's no other way to uh to, to, to say that uh, when i first spoke to liverpool uh about it I think they were a bit a bit suspicious because we were on the uh, support committee at the time, and mm-hmm. I said this is what we want to do, and you know I think they were a bit suspicious because obviously we we were at loggerheads with them over football, and they seen me as better than Shankly, so they seen us, they didn't the trust wasn't there, and I said no, genuinely it's not, it's just let us you know, work with us on this because if you're working tandem with the club on something like that, they reach us on parallels, you know. So I always knew if we could get the clubs on board as they did with Everton and we worked together and there was a little bit of suspicion at first, but I think they then realised, no, this is genuine. This is a genuine initiative. It's not here to score points. It's here to, to you know, you, we've got a humanitarian crisis at, at the, as it stands now and we're just trying to do our bit. And, and I think that they, they, they bought into it. And, you know, Peter Moores, Susan Black, uh, Liverpool and you know across the uh, park and Everton as well uh, they've been brilliant they have they've, they've, they've really sat down and sometimes it's in a club's DNA to get an idea and bob it yeah. uh, and take it uh, and, and you know and, and extract everything they can from it so on this uh, instance the Avens and I know have you had Forbes Forbes on this show have you have you had Forbes from oh, Bed Neighbours no. someone you need to get on to be honest he's absolutely well class and his team worked alongside us and he just got it what we were doing he just absolutely got it from a football perspective uh, from a community perspective and he's just been uh, magnificent and we, we've just worked together in tandem doing what we're doing and building it and building it and he's his ethos is like our ethos just make it as big as possible get as much food in and help the communities while, while it's needed so 
yeah, the clubs have basically been beyond reproach. They haven't started Robbie because they knew, and we've said this to them. You know, if you start to take it and turn it into a corporate entity, it loses all the power. Yeah, because it's a grassroots football initiative. It comes from the fans, uh, and also we'll just you know, say okay, sound and go back outside with our wheelie bins and say and, and do what we do anyway. So they've been. Uh, They've been, they've been good in that respect. Have you, have you had a helping hand with the other clubs that have started <coughs> these food banks around the country? I seem, seem to see more and more of it now. Yeah. Manchester City recently, yeah. and Newcastle. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Newcastle have been fantastic from day one. Uh, others feel uh, we've been to Burnley. Uh, and City have been brilliant because we've been, we've been pushing City for a while. And But I think what happened was when uh, the election happened, we, uh, another cohort of City fans who were a bit more of our mindset got in touch with us and said look we want to do something uh, we want to really do something because we can see what's happening in our communities and from that they really took it and run with it so they're, they're extremely active at the moment which is great to see and it really is you know it's, it, it, it's spreading uh, right across the country unfortunately but we're extremely proud of the fact that it is a, it is a a great example of working class solidarity and that's what we put out in a lot of our tweets it is it is it's not charity it's solidarity mm-hmm. it's people helping out each other's communities uh, and it's something that you know we're, we're extremely proud of and obviously when we go to newcastle we go to city they uh, we bring donations you know the first donation to united food bank come from spirit to shankly which was no it's, it's it's quite a it's quite a big thing to happen, uh, and it it really hits on when we talk about this when we do conferences or whatever we do. We talk about Liverpool fans taking football, taking food, sorry, to Manchester United fans. It's quite powerful and it resonates in the room. You know what I mean? It makes people think. And as I said in one of the videos we did, you know, our enemy is not someone in a Salford accent, a Cockney accent, a Geordie accent, uh, a Yorkshire accent. Our enemies are the people that are actually making us do this every week mm-hmm. and are making people use food banks our enemy is the system which has created this issue so um to take a little zig and zag but before i do how can people who are watching this video maybe aren't from liverpool don't go to the game very often how can they help the initiative so if you, if you yeah that's good so i mean he is you can donate to saint andrews if you're abroad uh, there is a, a donor uh, you'd have to google that and uh, see if you wanted to make a donation uh, but we get and we get people coming I mean we've had we've had uh, we're getting loads of people we've had loads of coverage in like China uh, Japan Russia so we're getting loads of fans coming I know the other tones be laughing but we're getting loads of Japanese at the moment coming uh, with, the do- with donations because they're reading what's happening it's brilliant what they're doing so I think the awareness out there from right across the board, I mean, we got a thousand pounds of the French supporters last uh, last home game as well. So there is an awareness, you know, where people want to when they come to the game, they want to make fan support and food banks a part of the you know experience, which is brilliant. Uh, but I just say to people, if you uh, go onto the social media and share it, mm-hmm. so make people aware, keep the awareness going, share other clubs. Uh, social media when they're doing collections that's you know as you said City Newcastle just share anything from fan sport and food banks just share because that makes a real difference to people going the game because you know we're getting like a ton of food we're doing well but we're scratching the surface I, you know we're not getting say we get a few hundred people who are, doing, who are actually coming and filling the van we still got 50 odd thousand people who aren't mm. who mightn't be aware of. so it, it is it is just raising that awareness so I think that's the best thing you can do uh, we've got exciting plans moving forward about creating a community hub uh, where we're going to ask people to donate from across the world but that's in its early mm-hmm. formation at the moment but that's where we, we see it going we see the ability we, no, we don't like food banks we think they're uh, they're, they're, they're demeaning you know mm. what I mean? So we want to create something which is which. If you're on a zero hour contracts and you 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 you've you've had a bad week, instead of going to food bank, we want to create a, like a cafe uh, where you can come with your family and have a food and have a f- have sit down, get a meal, uh, and feel as though you know you're not you're not demeaned. We'll have advice. This is the type of thing, but we want to do more of a holistic thing within the community. So we'll we'll actively be looking at that. We we bring friends money, uh, what we've been given, and we'll be doing that probably within the next six six months. And that's the way we see it evolving. And then if we can do it in Liverpool, then hopefully Newcastle can have one, City can have one, uh, and then hopefully that sort of fan support and food banks hub can spread. And it's football fans doing it, and that's what's great. It's changing people's perception of football fans. Instead of seeing as someone who come into your community and create havoc, 
to come into the community and actually helping out the community's needs. So it's changing that perception of football fans.